thinking it's important for us to know the difference between Sony and a Sony company. It was a dark and stormy cliche. Look at all these lamps! And what kind of witchcraft allows for such little illumination from close to a billion bulbs? What was the point of unlocking the door if the camera was just going to pass through it? Everyone is most concerned about your behavior. Either the British never flinch out of sheer politeness or the movie wanted to give us a jump scare that disobeyed several laws of physics. We're supposed to believe that Emmeline quickly and quietly removed a piano wire before anyone was able to find her and without even consulting a YouTube tutorial. The staff seems to have moved so quickly that they are ringing bells in every room of the house except the one with the piano that seems to be near the main staircase. It all ends here. It does not, for we are not that fortunate. Is the stake for the eye an invitation the best you could come up with? Was it too beneath you to add a splash of blood or turn the V into a cheeky little vampire tooth? You've got magic. Annoying woman proves that the annoying job is annoying. But also, we're supposed to think this woman is a dick and feel sorry for Evie when Evie is the one who chose this moment to talk over the poor man's speech by offering disgusting nibbles. Ugh, a creep. You have zero proof that the person who gave you that 20 was the same person who wrote that number. Currency circulates. For all you know, it could have been the shush lady. I did grab us a swag bag. And there's a DNA test in there too. As far as contrived swag bags go, this one is up there with the most offensively plot-initiating bags to be swagged. But much more on that later. I'm so proud of you, and your dad would be too. We've got an orphan protagonist cliche, but at least we're finding out about it through a heartfelt voicemail, rather than seeing them murdered in an alleyway again. This movie's about bats, right? Unlocking your family history is as easy as DNA. The marketing people who fail biology and think DNA is easy. Evie's supposed to be the hero, right? Well, tell that to poor Matthew, who has obviously had his phone stolen by your so-called hero. Look, all I'm saying is, <laughs> Lepers don't usually change their spots. What the f***? This doesn't make any sense. Who's the leopard here? Oliver? How does Grace know what kind of spots he has or if they need changing? Evie's profile says that she's from London, England. And I do not believe that to be the case. Your New York establishing shots won't make this not Budapest. What about your parents? Are they in New York too? Oliver, you dick. It literally says on her profile that both of her parents are dead. So why would he bring this up? It doesn't even make expositional sense considering the not so subtle voicemail montage we had earlier that already gave us this information. Your great grandmother, Emmeline, had an illicit affair with a footman. A black footman? Well, evidently, yeah. Cousin Oliver would be excellent at genealogy discussion since. Worst case scenario, it's an all-expenses-paid trip to Whitby, Yorkshire. <laughs> all-expenses-paid trips to Whitby, Yorkshire. This is a 747. This is not a 747. Also, the most unbelievable part of this ridiculous movie might be that Oliver forces Evie to fly eight hours to London and then puts her through a five-hour car ride to Whitby, Yorkshire. Why didn't he fly her to Manchester or Newcastle airport? Yes, I had to Google those places, but Oliver shouldn't have needed to. Don't trust men with goatees. They have numbers because they are like cattle. But this is still weird because cows don't do other household chores before I eat them. I think cows thought it was just get rid of it. We learn that Doctor Who's son is one of the main assholes at the center of all the goings on around here. Yet he has no clue who Evie is. I believe this is one of our important guests. And that makes a difference? This is the Lord of the Manor, Walter Deville. Evie is outraged that important guests would be treated differently from the help or service staff, right up until she realizes she's outraged at someone important, beautifully undermining her own point quicker than a warm biscuit melts butter. But this is my cousin who I was telling you about, Evie Alexander. It's Jackson, really. Evie doesn't treat Oliver replacing her last name with his own as a huge red flag. And I hope you enjoy your time at New Carfax. Evie. On the obnoxiously suave scale, I'm gonna give this character two unnecessarily undone shirt buttons out of five. For reference, that puts him somewhere between Sean Connery and Austin Powers. Evie, this is Mr. Field. Somebody thought calling this character Field would be less distracting or less obvious than Renfield, but now all I can think about is how his first name is Ren, and that this could cross over into the Ren and Stimpy universe, and now I wanna see that movie, so <laughs> sucks to be you, because now I'm more distracted than you could possibly imagine. You're most welcome to venture anywhere within the estate, ma'am, except the library. Because there's a rose in there that you mustn't touch for the fear that Disney will sue you or try to remake you in 10 years with more CGI and call it live action. Also, the library is set up like something unimaginable is going on in there, but it will mostly be taxidermy. A gift from the maids of honor. It's a bride within 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 a bride. It's symbolic. Get it? No? Yeah, I mean it. The mirror broke last week, but we've ordered a new one. This seems to be a useless bit of information, so I'm guessing it's a nod to the whole vampires don't have a reflection thing. Cool, but bear in mind that you've now primed me to make sure there isn't a single reflective surface in the mansion, and I'm confident enough to call bullshit on that right now. Don't mind me, just be lounging around in my Sony Pictures television outlander the series t-shirt. Isn't Sony the best?
Don't you just love Sony? Next thing you know, you'll be posing for new portraits. This wisecracking best friend back home that's worried for the main character's safety a bit feels very familiar in a way that I just can't get out of my head. Is there any chance we can raise the memory and start over? We're only 22 minutes in, but it's a hard yes to the former and a hard f*** you, I'd rather lick a hedgehog to the latter. Also trying to eternal sunshine your vampire movie. Okay, I'm gonna go for a jog. You better snog him. Choosing a jog in the fog over a snog. Introducing you to Underwhelming Mystery Door number two. <gasps> Jesus. Oh, you jump scaring tart bag, sh biscuit, f truffle, Berkshire hunt, f you. Miss, you should return to your room. It's not safe in the dark. But it shouldn't be dark. There are still so many lamps. Why are the lamps so bad at lamping? Hiding this key here isn't actually hiding anything. Everyone can see you get the key every time you get the key. I'll make you a chamomile tea to, to help with the jet lag. Most of this script is just things Americans think British people say. I am the safe in one day. We've got some chanting here that might mean something, and that's all the information we will ever get about that. I get wanting to build tension for the audience, but when you realize that this is one of the vamps f***ing around, it does make you wonder how they benefit from playing with their food like this. On a repeat viewing, it just doesn't make any... I'm sorry. <laughs> repeat viewing. <laughs> this scene deserves a sin for how difficult it is to see what's going on. But the icing on the cake is the absurdness of scaring this poor woman by hanging from the ceiling just so she can then get attacked from the side by a velociraptor. Excuse me, miss. I believe your family reunion is starting. And spooky Mrs. Doubtfire is waking her up now? Instead of with enough time to get ready and not be late? It was always just my mom, my dad, and me. And I, not and me, and Skip. Oh, thanks. It's Dee, right? These forts d'oeuvres are being served to confirm that Evie has more in common with the staff. We're not related, right? Not in the slightest. There's no need to British up your no. The master of the house has requested the 1897 Vino Cruor. Meaning both of us to go get it. You mean you'd rather go alone to the nope cellar of nopeness, population nope, twinned with Nopenhagen? Renfield keeps sending them to their deaths, and by the time we get to the party, there will be only two of them left. How does it make sense to incapacitate three-fifths of your catering staff on day one of your three-day event? Also, why do people keep accepting temp jobs for the mansion that people never come back from? What the hell is this all about? Does scaring people make their blood sweeter or something? Does the strobe lighting tenderize the meat? Evie doesn't treat this perfect fitting dress as a huge red flag. Would you like some champagne? Thank you. Beef carpaccionis? These two appear to have no concern that the other people that arrive with them are just gone. My family, the Billingtons, handle their legal affairs. The Klopstocks manage their finances and... The first thing I always do when I meet someone new is to vomit exposition about the three most important families in the plot I shouldn't know I'm in and their connection to said plot's antagonist. Your life in New York, it's answer. Terribly humdrum. This Pride and Prejudices and Bridgerton and Vampires on for all the some time. I don't travel much, I'm afraid. Well, you should. I'll uh, show you around. That wine glass had to accelerate time, slow it down, or form a wormhole to move from the bartender's hand to Lucy's without there being a break in this conversation. The Lord of New Carfax Abbey, Walter Deville. He's Walter Deville. He's Walter Deville. If this doesn't bore you, no cliche thing will. I don't know any dances. It's fine, just follow my lead. This follow my lead movie dance bullshit works. So do you ever get bored here? Yeah, more often than you'd think. Ugh, I just don't see how that's physically possible. Not believing someone could be bored by all the excitement going on in the English countryside. I have something better to show you. Is it his steak? I bet it's his steak. Now I decided against noting every single reflective surface because that would make the runtime of the Sins video longer than the movie itself, but bringing Evie into this glass case of reflections took the piss so much that I'll just dump those Sins here. I have zero redeeming qualities. Seeing this through that jawline. Are you showing me all this just to torture me, or...? The response from the one-person focus group that watched this movie somehow makes its way into the script. When are you going to kiss me? What makes you think I want to kiss you? This movie is what you'd expect to see if you merge clips from Sex in the City, Interview with the Vampire, and Days of Our Lives, but ask someone who hasn't seen any of them to edit it all together into a movie. But the problem is that halfway through, they realized that what they had so far was unwatchable, and it would be easier to invent time travel, go back to the CW circa 2004, and get them to make it instead. Well, now it's cliche. Oh, now it's cliche? Now it's cliche! The Sunday, that ship sailed with the struggling artist with the hopeless love life setup. And I'm afraid to say the crew is currently being tried at the Hague for crimes against original storytelling. <laughs> you f 
fucking asshole. She's clearly terrified, and this is how you choose to reassure her, dragging her out from under the bed by her ankles? Yes, I know, he's the bad guy, but he's not supposed to be giving that away yet, and she should not be okay with this. It's fine, you're safe, look at me. Hey, you're safe. Evie accepts this because in movies it's easy to dismiss shit that you 100% saw as tricks of the light or a piece of undigested beef. Chekhov's Kendall Holder Spike thing. Look, this will be important later and that's made clear by this very deliberate and extremely distracting shot. I'm wondering, what is it that you want with your life? I want to live life fully, you know, throw caution to the wind. And there is no better way to throw caution to the wind than throwing out a bunch of vague buzzwords. Yes, it's a grand life, but it's isolating. I want someone to see me for who I truly am. I think the movie is using being stinking rich as an allegory for living the isolated life of an immortal vampire, and actually that could be quite an interesting angle to explore. Someone should go back to 1994 and try that with Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. You can leave that thing here. There's no service where we're going. You would think that Evie leaving her phone behind would be a big deal based on this close-up, but it's not. This is Evie. Now get the f*** out without saying a word. The strange face mask reveal is the only reason these people are here, and I know this because they have no lines. So I'm excited to finally meet the bride and groom tonight. Having two people pretend to be the bride and the groom would have helped this ruse get a little further with Evie and with the audience. And don't act like that's any more elaborate or overly complicated than the rest of the shit we've seen. This office has this stupid key in the wall thing just to keep these files secret because vampires have never heard of computers, cabinets, or just not leaving shit on your desk. Don't you just love it when the klutz inside you knocks over a lamp that also perfectly knocks open a folder containing incriminating evidence? Is this really necessary? Did we really need that 750th jump scare? They put relevant information on this piece of paper, but at the top of this page, they went with a translated lorem ipsum when there didn't even need to be text at all. Okay, look, I can, I can explain this. If you let me explain, Dang. let's just not jump to conclusion. But can we jump to the part where you actually try explaining instead of saying, let me explain five different ways? Can we try that and move this along? When Oliver asked if he could invite his long lost cousin to the wedding, I asked if he could send some information over on you. Walt will go on to apologize for this, but his reasoning is pretty understandable. Someone with his amount of money and resources would no doubt be subject to scammers and the like. Doesn't make a lick of sense for a vampire looking for a new bride to sustain his immortality, but it does if you remember we're not supposed to know that yet. You should have just asked me. How the f*** would that go? A person I think might have the intention of stealing from me. May I offer you some compensation? Oh, by the way, do you intend on stealing from me? Please don't run away. It's not just that I've seen better love stories in other movies, it's that I've even seen better love stories between characters called Wally and Eve. Okay, fine, I accept. This joke response to what she thinks is a humorous marriage proposal is all he needs to then force her to become a vampire sister wife. What are the f***ing rules here? If you'll all indulge me for one more minute. I'd like to deliver the big reveal of the movie, which everyone already knows, it's vampires. Our four families have served each other for generations. But as you all know, there has been someone missing from this table. Someone vital to our alliance. And we've all felt the strain of this imbalance. What strain is that, you might ask? Well, I like foursomes and foursomes only, and for the last few months I've been forced to only have threesomes like some kind of peasant. When Evelyn, Alexander, and I are wed. So the big reveal that we've spent the last 66 minutes and 14 hours building towards is that the wedding weekend has been a setup to trap Evie into marrying Walter to fulfill some sort of blood pact, making this the most elaborate f***ing plan in the history of planning elaborately. Once Oliver managed to trick Evie into coming to the manor, why carry on the deception? Surely you're just risking her figuring out something is up and escaping. I mean, it's not like you were ever going to convince her to go along with this over the course of a weekend, right? Also, back to that DNA test. What if Evie hadn't worked at the gala event? What if her friend hadn't stolen the swag bag? And what if the swag bag hadn't contained a DNA kit? Oliver didn't initiate any of that. So were they just waiting for someone to maybe take a DNA test and show up on a Find My F***ed Up Family website? What was plan B? Trying this hard to make pomegranates disgusting when they naturally succeed at this on their own. Barely any blood on the table and hardly a drop on her clothes. No one bleeds this neatly. So I've heard. You lovely mortals have provided me with the gift of wives. And in return, you and your families have enjoyed safety and prosperity. I'd love to read the details of this pact because this is some vague balderdash and piffle sniff right here. Safety from what? Three vampires? Because I have a feeling they're going to be taken out by our hero Evie with no problem. And how is he guaranteeing their prosperity? Yeah, yeah, old money. But eventually even that money runs out when the state wonders why the lord of the manor hasn't changed in a thousand years. Years. Three brides. Three. We are at our strongest when there are three. We can thrive when there are 
three. Three blind mice, the three branches of the federal government, and three's company all have better explanations for their existence. The pact that your ancestors made many, many moons ago. We'll eventually learn this has been going on for centuries, but how? Does everyone in the three families just turn 18, get told about Uncle Vlad, and that if they're a woman, there's a chance they'll be forced to marry him? I just feel like at least one person might have taken an issue with the murdering the help part, if nothing else. Also, are we supposed to believe that the f***ing orchestra is in on this too? Evie, my love, whatever is the matter. The matter is that you have absolutely no chill, dude. What is this rush job of a wedding all of a sudden? Your seduction game was on point! Maybe she would have been down with the whole immortal vampire thing if you spent more than three days on the courtship. I'm not ready. Even your great-grandmother wasn't this difficult. Really? How compliant was Grandma? Because Evie hasn't done much more than cry and be in shock, which I think is fairly understandable given the circumstances. That thing in my room, that was you. Apologies. I was in a playroom mode. But that haunting started off with an image of Emmeline, so did Victoria take her form to f with Evie? Or did she just so happen to pick the same night that the ghost of Emmeline came to warn her? F***ing why and how on all sides. Our bloodlines are rare. They're special. And the combination of them makes the four of us all powerful. Oh, f*** off, movie. Who decided that? This is either a very specific evolutionary quirk or some asshole wizard designed them this way, and that makes even less sense. And how the f*** did you even figure this out? Did a load of vampires die by just marrying normal people? At what point did they work out that marrying an Alexander, a Klopp Stropensworth, and a Billing Winning Smithington would result in immortality? At the ceremony, you'll be bound to the master. And to us. But in order to make the bond permanent, you must first consume his blood. When you drink, you will absorb his power. You will gain the strength of a hundred men. Thank you, Lucy, for this third act exposition dump that explains everything we need to know for Evie's escape to make sense, but nothing we need to know for the villain's plan to make any sense. Also, if Emily had the strength of a hundred men, why wasn't she able to punch her way out of this terrible story? But only after the master drinks your blood will we all be granted eternal life. Seems like a lot of steps. They should really work on simplifying their business practices. Say goodnight. No! 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 I don't know why Evie is panicking. Can't she just do that one inch punch thing to get out of the box? That's the thing the bride can do, right? Also, is that it? Earlier Walt said, Get up prepared. Tonight is yours. And all we saw them do is expose it to the audience and then lock her in a box. Aren't they supposed to drink her blood or do, well, something? <laughs> Quickly now. Deus ex maidena. If you see one, a stake, beheading, or fire are the only ways to kill them. How exactly did she find that out? Been hunting vamps recently? Is that list exhaustive? Did Bonnie the Vampire Slayer here try acid and forks first before landing on fire and stakes? Also, I love how characters are now just showing up to deliver info to Evie for her final battle. Don't stop running till you're on a plane out of England. Evie stops when she gets to the ice house at the edge of the yard. My goodness, is this entire community under some sort of ordinance to provide as little light as possible while utilizing as many lamps as possible? That is ten f***ing lamps, and it is still so dark in here only Vin Diesel's Riddick would be of any assistance. Oh Either this mug is empty, or that is the most miserly serving of tea in all of England. <laughs> Evie ran into the one house owned by people who used to work at New Carfax. <laughs> sure she did. Why the f*** not? You really should drink your tea. Well, she'd have a better chance if it didn't keep magically disappearing and reappearing, ma'am. <laughs> Getting Britained by a pensioner. The rich using people as pillows has nothing to do with comfort and everything to do with status. There's someone of your background. Surely this is more than a leg up. The writers seem to be trying to include themes of racism and classism in this movie, but never give either enough attention or treat the topics with the seriousness they deserve. Regardless, you have no say in the matter. You already agreed to my proposal. You tricked me. He has to make her agree, but it doesn't matter if she's joking or didn't mean it. That's the loser says what of contracts, and quite frankly, I expect more. Whoever did the planning for this event must have fallen off the wagon or something. They started the festivities with an opulent garden party and then decided that the wedding, which should be the most extravagant of the three days, would take place in the basement. We are gathered here this evening. Holy Mortal Kombat, they drag Sub-Zero into this mess? I want her next. Evie goes off script and everyone is suddenly just cool with that. I've killed him. It's over. A silly girl. It was just a flesh wound. Stabbing Walter in the heart apparently didn't kill him, despite us being told it would. I'm sorry, but how am I supposed to stay invested in the story if I don't understand the stakes? You get back in line. No. Lucy turns on Victoria and Walt for, well, no reason really. Like, literally none at all. Other than Victoria is mean to Lucy and her new friend whose kidnapping she's complicit in. 
I'm supposed to believe that this will for some reason kill them. And it does, despite it not being a stake and not even piercing their hearts. Unless vampires keep their hearts next to their spleens. Also, this is a super fucking dangerous sculpture. Like, needlessly so. As if it were purpose-built for a lackluster finale or something. <laughs> Evie appears to be sticking to some sort of reverse tug-of-war rules here instead of just moving the stick even 10 degrees laterally. I am going to enjoy cutting your head off and feeding it to the wolves! And poor Sean Pertwee probably thought blue juice would be a career low for him. Creepy visual, sure, but is crawling on the walls really gaining him anything? She's about as freaked as she could possibly get, so why not just chase her ass down and quit f***ing around? Fortunately, Walt dying only takes away Evie's vampire abilities and doesn't do anything drastic, like kill her. Wouldn't want this sacrifice to actually mean something now, would we? You know the plan? Yup. We go in there and take him to F out. I can see why Yimi might think Grace would have trouble remembering such an elaborate, involved scheme. Also, so they're just gonna kill him? It's certainly implied, but how is that gonna play with the police? Even if the cops believe the whole Cousin Oliver tricked me into marrying a vampire story, they probably won't be okay with the skipping due process in favor of a baseball bat to the skull part. Wait, where did you get a bat? It's ironic, right? Bat. Vampire. As they walk off to go Jay and Silent Bob Cousin Oliver's kneecaps, we're all left wondering, is this ironic? And the truth is that no one knows what that word means. Too long! Too long! All right, bye. Evie. Me, Cousin Oliver. Hi. Hello, David. I mean, sir, I can't believe I've just said that. And now I've got to say <laughs> twice. I'm so sorry, sir. It's fine, it's fine. You could have said f and then we'd have been in real trouble. Nah, it's all the dividends of the past. I admit it, everybody. It was a lorry load of interesting cheeses. The Lord of New Carfax Abbey. Thomas Shelby. A sort of an oaky afterbirth. You're all monsters, all of you! <laughs> You're sick! <laughs> There's a reason this story's not called Cinderella. <laughs> the past! I don't want to hear anything about, I don't believe in vampires. Because I don't f***ing believe in vampires. What I believe in my own two eyes, and what I saw is f***ing vampires. I am a god! But you're not, Pink! Finish him! You! Yeah. Fatality!